you can affect the set time of the alginate based on the temperature of the water. The warmer the water, the quicker it's going to set. Um, if you really want to be meticulous, you can do a small test batch with a candy thermometer to test the temperature of the water and keep little notes as far as how quickly things set. Cleave with this water, about five minutes or so. Now, if you were doing a life cast, the water would be colder because we have to work with it. Since we've built a box, we, uh, this is going to be poured in. We wanted it to be a little bit of a quicker set. But if we were doing, using the, the allergen for a life cast, we need a little more working time so the water would be colder. How's that, Cleve? Does that need a little more water? Yeah, maybe just some water. And sometimes, too, unlike plaster, you can add water to the mix, add, add you know, uh, you can't do that when you're mixing plaster. Just spread a nice base. Can I see your hand, please? And I'm rubbing this in to make sure we get all the detail and limit the uh, amount of surface bubbles you may get. Okay, put your hand in. Are you comfortable? Yeah. When, uh, when you're casting someone's hand, you always want to have enough room to do your sculpture. You have to think ahead that what you're creating here is the foundation for what you're going to do. So if a person has uh, you know, curled fingers, it's going to be hard to sculpt the details. So you want their hand flat with fingers spread as wide as, as they can comfortably do for five minutes. So we poured a little bit of alginate in the base, set our hand in. I rub Go ahead. And now we're just filling the rest. I think we're going to need another batch. Yeah, it's, it's still, it's still uh, hasn't started to go yet. I mean, it's, it's just starting to go on my skin. Yeah. Just a little bit. But there should, it should be enough to set against her, against the, the batch. That's the other thing with alginate, too. It's, it's a little temperature sensitive. So as you're doing this, you'll notice that in the areas against your skin where there's warmth, it actually sets up first. So you can see it's just starting to go right now. Here's another, another good note. Alginate will not stick to alginate. Like, uh... Wet alginate will not stick to alginate that's already set. So we're able to do this because the top layer has not set yet. This is just a little thickening batch just to make sure the mold has enough thickness. Okay, now we just sit and wait for the uh, material to set up. The next thing we're going to do is prep uh, to pour the plaster, the liquid plaster, into this mold. Um, you don't want to wait too long because alginate will start to shrink as it sets and that'll you know, create all kinds of problems. So we wanna, once this is, we have Cleve outside right now actually prepping the plaster so when we pull her arm out, we can take the mold directly out to Cleve and he can start pouring the plaster, then we can generate our positive off of which Bruce is gonna do his sculpt. The alginate has set up, and alginate, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's an impression material, it's been around for a while. Typically dentists will use it if you ever had molds made of your teeth, if you have braces. Um, it's the same material, it's a derivative of seaweed, it doesn't stick to anything. It, it, uh, when it sets, as you can see, it becomes a, a very rubbery material. I mean, this is uh, not a lot of tear strength, but this is alginate when it's set. Picks up all the detail we'll need of her hand, pore, fingernails, everything. So uh, this material is now set, we're ready to get her hand out. So, all right, just start wiggling your fingers. Okay, and then slowly you'll have to break the suction as you kind of just pull your arm out. Cynthia is uh, moving her fingers around to release the suction of the algae. It might take a minute. Um, there's never any danger that, oh my gosh, she's going to be stuck in here. No. Again, if, we, if there was a problem, and I've 20 years I've never had one, we could always slice this up and pull her hand out if it's need be. Out. Here we go. It's going out. Just let her work her fingers. It's just, just a matter of, again, releasing her fingers to break the suction of the material, and you'll, you should I hear it. <laughs> there it is. All right, yeah. not missing any fingers, not, not missing any fingernails. And what we have here is the negative space that her hand takes up. And in this negative space, we're going to pour the plaster. So I guess Cleve is ready to start mixing up the hydrocal. We're going to use white hydrocal, which is a very hard white plaster. It expands slightly, and that helps compensate for the slight shrinkage in the alginate. So uh, Cleve is getting ready to pour the plaster into the water. And again, the first thing you want to do is once you get your plaster, you know, once it's stripped, it all settles. You want to fluff it up so that it gets a, a much more light, flowery consistency. And then slowly sift it into water. You always add your powder into the water. That's 
always. You, you don't do the reverse. And this is, uh, this is very, very different than alginate. Even though it looks the same, completely different material, you never want to confuse the two. You never want to mix up hydrocal thinking you're mixing up alginate. So be, be very organized, be very careful about how you separate the two materials. So Again, I will use the term plaster when I mean hydrocal. We're using white hydrocal. Plaster, it's a generic term for all, all different types of gypsums. And what Cleve's doing right now is he's just slowly sifting the powder into the water. You can weigh out your ingredients. Uh, typically, we do it by eye. There's an old trick that I'll explain, like how you can tell when you have enough plaster in the water. And the same thing goes for the hydrocal that it did with the alcohol. The temperature of the water will affect the set time of the plaster. Uh, this material is also referred to as stone. It's, it's another generic term, uh, plaster, stone. Uh, these are all just generic terms. And under that, you have your subdivisions of hydrocal, hydrocal B11, pottery plaster, which is white, but it's, it's very porous. Uh, Ultracal 30, which we use to make molds because there's low expansion. Uh, it's gray. Um, there's a bunch, there's peach stones and dental stones. Um, each of them have their own unique properties for this purpose. Again, for the casts, usually we'll make it out of white hydrocal. Sometimes if there's a need or if we're in a bit of a rush, we'll go right to the ultracal. That can get a little tricky, but the, the, the proper way is to do it on the white hydrocal and then do the sculpture on top of that and then create your ultracal molds. So right now you can see that the plaster is not really soaking in that much anymore. It's kind of settling on the top. What you want to have it look like is, is the term to it's referred to as like a dry riverbed, where the water gets totally soaked in and it looks like there's cracks on the surface. That's how you know when your plaster is ready to mix. You don't want to mix it too quick because it'll affect the strength of the gypsum, but you want to have it, as you can see, how it looks like a, a mud cracked dry lake bed. That's the look you want. You want all these white powders to be completely absorbed by the moisture. And we're going to mix the uh, gypsum by hand. Some people will use a drill with a little tool on it that's a, a, a circular paddle bit. Um, that goes a lot quicker. Um, again, we'll just do it by hand today, since most of you won't have that, those, those tools. Um, so you, by hand is totally fine. Just mix it for a few minutes, mix it real thorough so it's a nice, smooth, creamy consistency. Then we'll pour it in the mold and uh, generate our positive. This whole process also, by the way, will be duplicated for the other hand, for the right hand. We're going to do the exact same thing uh, when we do the other hand. We're just going to do it again. One of the things you want to be careful of is trapping air. A lot of times because of the orientation of the mold, when you pour the plaster in, uh, because it's a little thicker, it'll want to uh, create air bubbles. Sometimes the tip of the finger won't fill or there'll be uh, little, little surface bubbles uh, on the positive. There's several things you can do to reduce that. One of them is putting this on a vibrating table. It vibrates all the bubbles up. What we're going to do today is pour the plaster in, kind of rock it around, pour it out, and then pour it back in. So we, that'll uh, help uh, reduce the chances of getting any, any air bubbles. So. And the important thing when mixing your plaster is you don't want any lumps. You want to get this, you really want to get this nice and smooth and creamy and no lumps. So we're going to mix it uh, for a few minutes. When mixing the plaster, the, the more you mix, the longer you mix, the quicker it's going to set up. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And plaster goes through several stages as it sets up. So you'll know when you're, when you're uh, like right now, that's a pretty good consistency right now for uh, getting all the detail. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. That's, that's just about perfect. So. This is her left hand, right? Correct? Yeah. So her left hand, her thumb would be here. So I'm, I'm banging it. There's still plaster in there. And the reason I'm banging it is the plaster is working its way down into the fingertips. And hopefully, we're not going to trap any air. You always run that risk. Make sure you get it in the thumb. Hold it there for a second. I'm going to pour a little bit out. I just want to make sure that fully fills. I'm tilting it on its side right now because the thumb is here. And I want to make sure if there's any air, it's going to want to be 
popped out the top, if there is any air. There is a little air in this. The value of doing a life cast uh, on this, it's uh, on a custom hand as opposed to doing it on a generic, is you're guaranteed, no pun intended, of it fitting like a glove. Everyone's hand anatomy is slightly different. Like knuckles bend different where the proportion from here to here, uh, the distance of the fingers is different. This ensures that it's gonna be the best fit possible. Now, sometimes you'll get lucky and a generic, you can sculpt a generic piece and it might fit on someone's hand, but this one is, is, is a guarantee that it will. And again, banging it helps work out all the bubbles. All right. Now at this point, the best thing to do is just let it set. I can pat some, we'll see, maybe see a bubble. There we go. See how the bubbles come to the surface when you tap the mold? That's what you want. You don't want any bubbles in your plaster. Once you've tapped all the bubbles out and the mold is filled, we're gonna let the plaster set and while that's setting, we're going to start on our other hand. 